Thank you for joining us on Black Investments Matter. I'm Antoine Anderson. There are three terms that every person who is going to file a claim on their insurance for their home. Three terms that you need to know. We've got expert opinions and advice from a claims adjuster by the name of Troy Morrow. Stay tuned and find out what we're talking about. Well, thank you for joining us, sir. Mr. Morrow, how are you doing? Are you and Antoine? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh not only is he in the claim adjuster extraordinary, he's a good friend and a brother to me. So what yes, I want to do is introduce you to them or have you introduce yourself to the audience. Go ahead, sir. All right. My name is Troy Morrow. Uh, I'm an independent claims adjuster. Uh, got into this field about 2004, uh, just on a whim, and uh, it just took off. It's definitely something that's uh, uh, prospering and uh, just good to know that you can help people and uh, help guide our people with something that we don't, uh, you know, we're just not privy to. We don't, we don't uh, take the time to understand uh, and we don't take the time to learn. So it's definitely something I, I take pride in and enjoy, so. And we definitely it's- appreciate it, man, no doubt. One of the biggest questions that we come across, especially in times of these crises, is whenever these hurricanes or whatnot happen and you have to actually get a claim put into the insurance, what is that process? And let's start off by talking about what is an AOB in um, an insurance claim? Okay, so AOBs are dangerous uh basically and this is how uh when you see those contractors and those guys walking around in neighborhoods and they're ringing doorbells and saying hey uh have you had somebody look on your roof uh i can help you with the insurance claim and help you get uh uh, your roof replaced or anything and they they get you to sign these uh uh documents and basically what they are are contracts um and what it is, is it's an assignment of benefits. That's an AOB. And once you sign those assignments of benefits, anything uh, that you do with your insurance, you're telling your insurance company that you're allowing that contract company or that particular contractor or anything to uh, have access to your insurance benefits. So now they're speaking as if they were the insured. Mm-hmm. So that allows them to call in, uh, find out how much value you have uh, in your policy, and uh, all payments are directed to them. So they have access basically to your whole claim. And that's for that's per claim. It's like once you do this one time, say you do another claim next year on something else, you, you have to start the process over again, correct? And it's-, it's... Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. What is the major pitfall of having somebody other than yourself being the assignee of those benefits? Uh, you no longer have control of your claim. That's crazy. Uh, basically, That's crazy. Uh, yeah. So whatever happens goes through them. So, so if, if they don't show up, like, you know, what happened with me, unfortunately, that's that could be one of the possibilities, huh? Correct. They, they like I said, the, the check goes to them. Mm, mm, mm. All payments go to them. So, uh, and, and that's unfortunate. That happens a lot with uh, major major events. Uh, mm. That's why you see uh, these companies come in from out of town. That you know <laughs> that you may have never seen. You're like, where are you from? When you see their truck and they might have a St. Louis tag on it, or you know somewhere that you know they they know that there's a lot of work in the area, so they all just flock down there. That's crazy. But it's just a feeding frenzy, in other words. Correct. So let's say we get past that. We now are educated on knowing what the assignee of benefits is, and we should never assign benefits to an outside third party. So yeah. once we get to that that part, now we get the appraisal. Can you tell our viewers what the difference is between an actual cash value and a replacement cost value when it comes to stuff like replacing your roof? Okay, so basically what that is on every policy, your policy can be actual cash value or it can be replacement cost. Uh, What I like to tell people is if you can 
um and you know it depends on your pocket um uh you never want to have actual cash value on anything on your policy so you have different coverages inside your policy and every every insurance company is the same it doesn't matter who you go with uh every insurance company has what's called a coverage b coverage c coverage and a d coverage okay and then you have endorsements after that so what a coverage is is that's the dwelling of your structure that's uh whatever the the building itself a covers that then you have b coverage which is other structures and that covers anything that's not attached to the home that's a structure like a fence a shed a pergola uh, a gazebo things that aren't attached to the structure that's called other structures that's your b coverage then you have your c coverage which is contents and that's your personal items uh, we basically say anything that you would take when you move from that home basically is considered personal property gotcha. you know contents and then you have d which is called ale additional living expense now your ale covers anything like let's say you have to be uh, evacuated from your home during the storm or once you come back to your home and the home is unlivable uh, let's say the roof is open and you got water and stuff coming in or or all the windows are broken out and you have to stay away from the home at that point in time and while it's being repaired. So it's called additional living expense because now you need additional living expense above, above your normal needs. Mm. So that's your D coverage and that covers you for that. Also for people who rent their properties, that ALE covers you for loss of rent. Mm -hmm. uh, depending on how your policy reads, um, they'll they'll reimburse you sometimes the full amount of what your rental is or 80 percent. It just depends on how your policy reads. But that's all covered under your D. Um, and then all of those can be what we were discussing, actual cash value or replacement costs. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason I say you don't want actual cash value because it is exactly what it says, actual cash value. So when that adjuster goes out to your home, and let's say we're just dealing with the, the structural, and that's your A coverage. When that adjuster comes out to your home, he's gonna look at all the damage, he's gonna measure, he's gonna take photos, and he's gonna create an estimate. So when I get that estimate back at my desk, I look at the estimate. Now let's say he estimated your home and said, it's gonna take $40,000 to repair your home to get it back to normal. Okay. Now, if you have actual cash value, they're gonna depreciate that home. So let's say that home is 20 years old. Let's say the home was built in 20, uh, what, uh, let's say we're in 23. So let's say the home was built in 2003, right? Mm -hmm. They're gonna say, well, this home is 20 years old and they're gonna depreciate it for 20 years. You're gonna get that depreciated value from the beginning. And this is now, not property value. This is the home's actual value, not what the property would be worth, right? Correct. So, so your coverage, your coverage is going to be what the property value is. That's mm -hmm. just that's your coverage, and that's the, your coverage amount in that coverage. So, when I say coverage A dwell, and if your home is valued at four hundred thousand dollars, you're going to have four hundred thousand dollars worth of coverage. Now, when I say $40,000, I'm saying if that adjuster said this is what it's going to cost to repair the damages that we're seeing. Mm -hmm. So when that guy comes out and specs, he's going to he's going to send that report back and say it would take $40,000 to repair this home from the damages that we see right now. Now they're going to depreciate that damage by 20 years. Wow because you have actual cash value. They're gonna depreciate it regardless. You're always gonna see a depreciated amount, okay? Gotcha. Now, the difference is whether it's recoverable or non-recoverable. Now, it's non-recoverable if you have actual cash value. Hmm. So, they're gonna depreciate that and you're not gonna get that depreciation back because you're getting it at actual cash value. So, they're only repairing the house to is 20 year old self they're not going to replace it back to when it was a baby basically got you got you now you had if you had replacement costs they're going to still depreciate it 
But once you make your repairs, they're going to refund you that depreciation. So, so let's say, like I said, you're at $40,000. Mm. I have that estimate. And he says we depreciate it. It's a calculation. It's going to say we're depreciating this at 20% because the, the home is 20 years old. It might be 25%. So they're going to take 25% of $40,000. And what are we at? We're probably at about ten fifteen thousand mm. dollars maybe you know what i'm saying wow that you're gonna lose on that so now you're at thirty thousand dollars right mm -hmm. instead of forty thousand you had thirty now you have a deductible which you're responsible for now if you have actual cash value i'm pretty sure you're going to have a a high deductible mm -hmm. so let's say now your deductible and because it's a storm event if it's an event any name event or anything like that, your deductible now becomes 2% of your uh, your dwelling. So like I said, if your home is three, let's say your home is valued at $300,000, your deductible is no longer your normal deductible because of the storm event. It becomes 2% of your, your value of your A coverage. Crazy. So now <laughs> your deductible now might be seven thousand dollars so now you didn't already lost ten fifteen thousand dollars in depreciation now you're responsible for seven thousand dollars they're going to take that out of that total as well because that's your portion you have to pay it out of your pocket mm. versus if you had replacement cost value which you would get reimbursed for that seven thousand or so that you had no you would you would get reversed for the big amount for the for the depreciation amount you're always going to have your deductible amount mm -hmm. so so the best way to have a low deductible is to have the better insurance so if let's say like you said if i had replacement cost my deductible wouldn't have been that high got you got you man thanks for breaking that down for us brother i really appreciate it as I fell victim to one of those um, major contracting schemes in this last storm in Georgia, didn't know how bad I got got. You got to ask somebody when you when you don't know, ask somebody. Ask somebody. Yes, sir. And you should. Oh, and that's another thing. When you're sitting down with that agent, do not walk away without understanding what your policy has in it, because there's hidden endorsements sometimes uh, inside those policies. So don't just say if he says, oh, you just need this and you need that. Make sure he explains to you exactly what coverage you have, because that's what he has to do by law. Right. Be proactive and check your own policies as well. Yes, Bro, yes, I, is it uh, OK if I put your contact information into this video so that if anybody has any questions or can I just put it in the, um, the links in the comments of this video? Yes, so, sir. All right, man, we'll do that. Brother, I appreciate you taking the time and educating us all, man. I will be yes, speaking to you very soon. Thank you. This is, again, once again, thank you, Troy Morrow, brother from another yes, mother. Sir, I, I love you, love yes, you sir, too, brother. man. I'll talk to you. All right. And before we go, we'd like to thank our customers and sponsors for their continued support as we reach just shy of 784 more watched hours before we are fully monetized. We'd like to thank Grace Fellowship Christian Church out of Congress, Georgia. We'd like to thank Creations by Tice out of Mooresville, North Carolina for our beads. We'd like to thank Ranger Media Group out of Anchorage, Alaska. And finally, Massive All-Stars out of Fayetteville, Georgia. Thank you guys for your support. It means a lot. We'll talk to you very, very soon.